Harry's acting so different from the traits they previously established. If everyone stayed exactly the same, life would be tedious and predictable. Like a third season of a Netflix show. You're listening to Dear White People with Joelle Brooks. Same title, new spin. The show's gonna be a little different with your girl. Listen up, you bougie mother. The only voice you need in your head is your own. You just gotta lean in. Guessing her people came in on a different ship than ours. Where's the lie? She white, right? Take a look around. Friends, neighbors, family, gathering to share one thing, hope. Oh God, okay, I'm gonna get some wine. All right. It's hard living with so much uncertainty, but hope is powerful. And sooner or later, the truth will come to light. Just have faith. I'm not paying for that. Hi, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. It's really nice to meet you. You're so talented. Oh, thank you. You too. I love, love Dead to Me. It's so thank good. You. Thank you so much. I love We're your show. It's so like, I, 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 your show inspires me so much, especially visually. Oh, thank you. It's, it's just such a, it's like just so beautiful. Thank you. We really, we really try to make it beautiful. <laughs> you succeed. You succeed. Where, where are you right now? Great question. I, I am at home in, in LA. Where are oh, okay. you? Okay. I'm also at home in, in, in LA. Wait a minute. Could we be in the same house? Is that possible? <laughs> it might as well be. It's like, that's my black room. No, I love your <laughs> office. It looks very organized. Thank you. I wish this was my office. It's my oh. den. I, I live in a, in a pretty tiny little bungalow. And so um, this is uh, my makeshift. My, my, this is my COVID work from home office. Ah. It's really my den. And well, now, the well, now I, I have to ask you the question that, you know, everyone is constantly asking everybody right now. Yes, which please. Is, which is, of course, um, how, how's the COVID been for you? <laughs> How is working in a pandemic going for you? I mean, listen, good question. <laughs> it's, um, you know, I think like everybody, it's, uh, you know, I'm in, my, I'm in an existential dystopian crisis like everybody sure. else, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I obviously, because I even have a job and because I even get to work, I do feel lucky, you know? Yeah. And, and I feel really grateful, you know, not just because, you know, for the stability, you know, of it uh, and for, you know, knowing where my paycheck is coming from, but also honestly to have something to distract me. Yeah. You know, like something, something to pour my focus in. Uh, I'm, I'm, I tend to be a pretty anxious person. And if I didn't have this right now, like I don't, I feel like I'd be really, you know, I'd be probably spinning out a little bit, you know, just about. Yeah so many things that are going on. I don't even know where to start. How's your COVID going for you? <laughs> Woo! Ups and downs, Liz. Ups and downs. I... Um, <laughs> we were actually writing, we were like, um, I want to say, maybe like a third into writing our final season for Dear White People when outside shut down and when you know we switched to like this, this zoom life so we i kind of felt a little bit of what you were talking about at the beginning especially where it was like i'm so glad i have something to do every day like i'm just yeah. like even though it's awkward and we're on zoom which is exhausting and kind of perfect for a writer's room but awful for a writer's room like at the very same time that's exactly right that is exactly <laughs> right it's like it's sort of good because you have to really focus yeah you, it's like you can't hang out and sort of, you know, have fun in the way that you do in a writer's room. Like you sort of just have to get down to business, but also you can't have fun and you can't hang out the yeah. way that you usually do in a writer's room. It's also exhausting in ways that I didn't expect. Like we would like, we would manage to do like, a, like, cause you know, I'll, we'll do like a little table read with just the writers. We would manage to do like one of those and everyone just felt like so completely depleted. I don't know if it was like the constant eye contact or, the delay of the audio. I don't know what it was, but it was just like an hour on a Zoom writer's room felt like five hours in a real writer's room. <laughs> yeah, it is sort of like dog years or something. It's yeah. Like, like Zoom, Zoom hours are like- Zoom hours. Kind of hour. Cause you know, normally in our writer's room, 
you know, we do a normal day. We do an eight hour, you know, an eight hour day, especially, you know, in, in pre-production. And, you know, I, if once we get to like six hours, I feel like, like a cartoon character, like where my eyes are just like, <laughs> You know, like I, it's you really. It is just hard to sort sort of focus on you know people in tiny boxes all day. Yeah. Um, I mean, thank God we have the technology so that at least we could we can do a version of it, I guess. But yeah, it is a it's a weird experience. Where are you guys with the uh, with the show right now? Um, so we are about a little over a month into the writers' room. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and. You know, so we're breaking, we're breaking the season, we're breaking stories. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, just a sort of inside baseball a little bit. Like doing it yeah. without a whiteboard is, oh. you, whew, it's really challenging. Tough. Because you're why, like, why do we need whiteboards so much? Why is that? What is that? You know, it's funny because when we, I, I, I started in. You know, I started as a joke writer and I, you know, I started in a, in a very different like genre. And yeah. when I started writing narrative television, you know, in, in sitcom rooms, this whiteboard was like a thing where I was like, this seems sort of dumb. But <laughs> now it is like, I really almost like have a hard time functioning without it. I mean, we have sort of virtual, you know, versions of it, but there's something about being, you know, the, the, the collective of us in a room looking, all looking at the same thing. It, it really organizes like, you know, your thoughts and it organizes, right. you know, your themes and your characters and your arcs and all that. And without it, I feel like I'm a, like a, like a baseball player without a glove. Yeah. It's like, it's like learning how to play the sport, you know, but with all different equipment. Yeah. I, I can see that. I mean, when we, when we were doing our zoom situation, we at least had like, you know, we had had whiteboard time, we had had plenty of notes, we had, you know, in some cases drafts or outlines so we could kind of like share a screen just to have the same thing. But even that got very irritating, I have to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right, there's like, it's like you need this image to put it all on because <laughs> otherwise it's like, where does it live? Where does That's, it exist? Yeah. And I'm not like a super, like, like I'm, I'm sort of like a, an, a completely useless type A person. <laughs> because I, I don't, I'm not organized. Like, you know, I, I, I'm very much, I guess, like a creative person in that, like, I am, I'm just not like a super organized person. And the whiteboard, I feel like was my organization. It was how I, right. you know, and for, for anybody who doesn't know what a whiteboard is, it's like, you literally write like episode one, episode two, episode three, and you write just your beats of what's happening. And, and it is, it is, it is really like, it's this muscle that I'm like learning to retrain, you know, to, 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 to work that, you know, story brain, you know, virtually. And it's yeah. it really challenging. I, oh God, I'm going to, I'm not going to quote this person correctly, but if somebody out there figures a quote on Instagram me or something, but there was like a big director, I can't remember who it was, but it's like one of these seventies guys. And I know it was yeah. a quote from the seventies because they use the term making love in it. So watch <laughs> out Liz. Well, that's how you know watch out so yeah. i heard i recently heard that like you know directing or in this case show running or any creative pursuit it's a lot like it's a lot like making love in that you wonder is this how everyone else is doing it <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious i've never heard that and i know i wish i could i wish i could attribute it to someone it was someone very brilliant but i don't remember what i was watching i love it i love it by the way like it could have easily, if it was in the seventies, also been making Whoopi, which is like a you know. True. Um, true. It that is so true. It really is. It's like such a weird private matter. I know. So how do you guys you know? do it? Yeah, how do you do it? It's what, like how um, was your first? How what, what's your first like couple months look like? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, we're just learning how to you know be together, and <laughs> um, it's you know, and it's funny. There there is there is like weirdly a lot of um, you know odd similarities to that because like also just sort of being in a room and being vulnerable and like opening yourself up you yeah. know it's it's that's really funny well um, i i just remember like you know we'll be like because i always like to watch movies i mean that's sort of where i you know i came from the independent film world mm -hmm. um you know i i i like oh my cat's always definitely gonna make an appearance she's all over this um 
I have a cat I, too, but I locked her out. So oh, I can't lock the I can't lock her out. She just starts screaming. Anyway, um, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I never know if I'm doing it right because like I didn't I didn't start in a writers' room. I didn't get to see like you know showrunners doing their thing from a, a certain perspective. And so you know, at the start of my room, I I remember I just had everybody watching a bunch of movies like you know, with sequences in them that were kind of similar to something I was going for. And I just remember tail turning it. Went by. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah, see that tail. tail. She is like, oh, there's a Zoom happening. It's time to shine. Um, no, but like, I just remember like at one point turning to my, my co-showrunner and, and going like, at some point I think we should start writing, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to do that today. Right. Um, you guys just dive in over there. I mean, so, um, you know, it's funny, like, so, you know, I, I also didn't start in, in this kind of television, um, but I, but I have pretty much only ever been in a, in a sitcom writer room, yeah. like a, you know, multicam, which is a very, very different, you know, kind of show. And, you know, uh, frankly, like a much easier story to break because it's formulaic and, you know, you know, you, you know, you're kind of, you're gonna start with a problem and you're gonna, the problem's gonna get worse and then you're gonna kind of solve it, you know? Right. And it's, it's pretty basic storytelling. And, uh, you know, so so our, our story breaking is like a pretty complicated process because we're usually breaking two or three pretty big stories in a row, you know, like right. in the same episode for right. the same characters. Right, yeah, you yours, your, your show unfolds as you watch it. Yeah, so yeah. It, so it really the the story breaking process takes a long time because there are so many layers to it. Yeah, um, and there there is, you know, my it's my own fault. But there's a relatively high degree of difficulty in having to break those stories because you're telling this sort of friendship, you know, kind of fun, you know, relatable story on one level, but then you're mm -hmm. also telling like kind of like a crime centered mystery right kind of story on another level and then there's like a family and then there's like you know sort of complicated relationship anyway so it we do not dive right in we talk a lot about what we're trying to sort of say for the mm. season like what is the story what is the broad story that we're trying to tell you know what are the you know what are the broad arcs of our characters like where are we trying to deliver them to by the end mm. of the season in this case by the end of the series um you know and i i always write from like on this show i write from like a real place of i guess empathy would be the word like i really um try to put myself kind of in their situation and in their shoes and really think like what would the authentic sort of direction be here you know what would right. i do if i if i was this person and um you know so so hopefully there's like a real actual humanity to the story that we're telling even though there are crazy twists and turns and like yes you know yes, it's a little there bit, are. it's a little crazy but you know life is a little crazy and life is a little heightened so um you know we we sort of just try to follow like what the characters would really do uh and it, it does it takes a while it takes a yeah. while to really break the stories and I'm sort of, I don't know if you do this when you write, but like, like certainly when I'm writing my own script, like when I wrote the pilot for Dead to Me, I, I tend to like iron while I write. So I keep going back to the beginning. Oh my God. I start over and I keep I can't ironing. stand myself. I, uh, <laughs> yes, I understand. Sorry. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I, I always go back to the beginning and I just make sure, is this foundation really right? And it, it, is, is the beginning clear? Am I starting everybody off in the clearest way? And I tend to do that too with the story breaking. So, yeah. you know, we tend to, you know, sort of work on like, almost like a, a three episode chunk at a time, just to make sure like, are these three stories really working well together? Mm. You know, are, are, we, are we creating a strong enough foundation for the story that we're trying to tell? Um, and, and you know, like, it's funny, like normally I'm, the, the one thing I generally pride myself on is that I am a pretty decisive person, which you have to be- I think so. A showrunner, it's sort of like the number one it's like the first thing you need to be is like just make a decision and go with <laughs> it. But because this is our final season, I I feel so much pressure to make the right decision. Sure. You know that I do find myself going back to the beginning and just making sure that everything is kind of, you know, setting things up to be the right way. Do you do that? You you start from the beginning? 
Oh yeah, no, I like to start from the middle and then just sort of work my way out. Um, I think I'm talking about a Reese's Pieces. No, I, um, I, yeah, I usually come in like with a concept, you know, there's something I wanna say. And then we have a lot of conversations about what the room wants to say. Because I mean, one of the things I noticed right away from the movie is that, you know, it's the, the movie Dear White People's multi-protagonist and the show was certainly gonna be multi-protagonist too, but my audience that was showing up were people who looked like me, but also people who didn't look like me. There was a lot of black women showing up. So um, there were a lot of white people showing up. There were, you know, I wanted to make sure that, that there was somebody in that room that understood a character or a group of characters in the show better than even I could having created them. And absolutely. And, and, and particularly because, uh, you know, I'm a gay black man, but I'm still a man. And, you know, the female characters on the show are so popular. Um, I, you know, a lot of times we're just talking about like things that, like, I want to know what isn't occurring to me that is mm -hmm. happening in the lives of the people in the room that, you know, maybe needs to be told this year or needs to be told in the season. And we sort of, I come in with my concept and people kind of come in with theirs and we kind of meet somewhere in the middle and, and spend a lot of time figuring out what it's meant to be about, you know, because right. like Dead to Me, you know, the show, our show doesn't quite unfold in that same kind of mystery kind of way, but it, it has lots of layers and um, it has a lot of things going on. And yeah, I mean, you have, you, do very have you have multi protagonists and you have many different storylines going yeah. on. They have a lot to say about everything. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at, but it's such a great format because you can say so much. Like it is such yeah. a topical show, you know. It is so of this moment, um, and you do such a good job of capturing. I think you know the feeling of the moment, and you know just like the the dynamics that you know that feel so. Um, I don't know, just like sort of prescient, but also current and like. Thank you. Sure. I mean, you know, yeah. Like our show is just not like a show that you know can sort of talk about kind of current events or 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 even like sort of you know literally socially what's going on in the moment like we right. are just, there's a lot more sort of allegory i think that that we tend to do sure um, you know and i i in some ways like i i kind of wish that we could address certain things you know uh, obviously like what's going on socially and what's going on you know in terms of like racial racial justice and sure. just this awakening that's happened but like there is there is a really this is not really kind of what we do like it's yeah. it's just not like a rip from the headlines like current events kind of kind of show it's really a show more about feelings mm. and relationships and you know we can make little comments here and there and i always like try to make sure that the show like i i, I always say like the show is like aware of itself you know what I mean? Like, we're, yeah, I'm absolutely. Aware. I, I see that. Yeah, like it's yeah. like we're in on the joke, you know. But and and we're making commentary where we can. But you know, ultimately, you know, it's like this show about these, you know, kind of affluent white ladies mm. in, you know, in 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 this very white Christian community, um, you know, who are, you know, generally dealing with um, kind of like. I hate to say women's issues because it's like that feels very like women's studies, uh, <laughs> but like you know what I mean. Like we 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 do definitely tackle like you know just the, the sort of nuances of being a woman and sure. you know and being in complicated relationships with men and you know a lot of the sort of I mean it's a feminist show, um, but I Absolutely. but I but I just I so admire what you guys are able to do in terms of your storytelling. You know just in terms of you know putting a spotlight on interesting and important topics. Yeah, you know, it's it's a burden and a curse because you don't want to be <laughs> so topical that by the time the thing comes out, it, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Right. Uh, and, and you don't also want to be so topical that like, it's like, you know, I don't care. Like, just, you're right, fine. You know, it's like, we have to care. <laughs> we have to care about these people who are so, you know, articulate and, you know, talking a mile a minute uh, to get these ideas out and to prove that their argument is right. None of it matters, you know, if you don't, if you're not rooting for their relationships or if you're not wanting them to win or if you don't like them or if you don't see yourselves in them. So exactly. yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dance, you know, either way. Yeah. How, are you, how are you thinking about the COVID of it all? Like, are we pretending that doesn't exist? 
are we existing in it? Like it's, you know, my show takes place on a, on a college campus, you know, of which no one is on right now. Right, right, right. That's true. Yeah. I mean, like that is, yeah. What are you, I mean, I mean, so I, I'll, t I'll answer quickly and say, cause I think your answer is going to be more interesting. Um, you know, we don't know when we're even going to be able to shoot it, Yeah. you know? And so, I am definitely wary, kind of in the same way that you were talking about. Like, you don't want to be behind the story. Like, you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, be be mired in some, you know, uh, th this topic that just feels like everybody's past and like mm -hmm. just no way of knowing. So my way of dealing with it is sort of not dealing with it at all, and <laughs> using instead I like, that like way. instead of like being literal and 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 having this, you know. Um, a pandemic happen, you know, we more kind of focus on like, how do we take the feelings that we have in this moment? Like, you know, the feeling of being uh, stuck or limited or, um, you know, cut off or not being sure when you'll ever get to, you know, feel a certain way again. Like those sort of, the sort of, the sort of general gestalt, mm. we take that and we go, okay, how do we express that? in sort of like an allegory for the story like how do right. we take those feelings and make and infuse our 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 story our totally made up story with that kind of vibe right right yeah you know? i totally get that yeah absolutely yeah um, i think i think we're kind of in the same place it's like you know we we sort of dear white people very intentionally never says when it takes place um, because frankly, if we were being very literal about it, that would make no sense. The characters would actually be in a different, they're in the wrong generation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like if they were seniors in 2013 or right. juniors in 2013, that's a different, we're in a whole different situation. So we never really quite say, um, but at the same time, like you said, people have an anticipation. We have an anticipation, an expectation that the show speak to what's happening. And particularly yeah. with race relations, so much is happening that yes. um, we want to comment on. And ironically, that we were already commenting on, uh, you know, because racism didn't start, incidentally, um, at the end of May 2020. Yeah, that's what I hear. It's been around for a bit longer. And so... Yeah. It yeah. turns out the racism we were speaking to is actually the same racism. It's the very same racism that uh, is happening now. So, you know, there are some things, unfortunately, that are evergreen about the material. But at the same yeah. time, we're like, OK, but if if there were a pandemic in our world and it was the same pandemic, like technically their entire senior year is going to be at home. I don't <laughs> want to watch that show. I don't want to write that show. Yeah. But we can't. We also can't completely ignore it because, like, there are many racial implications to it that, like, are just too good to not mm -hmm. talk about. And we are, I mean, th this writer's room is just the shadiest group of people ever. <laughs> we have a lot to freaking say about the times and we need an outlet for it. So yes, and I'm so glad you have one. And it's so, it's like, it's so necessary. It's like, you know, if your show didn't exist, it should have, it should have started existing in this moment, you know? <laughs> Um, and to some people it did <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> you know, when people stumble upon your show on on netflix um oh this seems addressed to me <laughs> oh wait a minute i'm a white person let me see what i'm a white person say. dear um, white people oh this is lovely it's like a letter it's like a love letter <laughs> So wait, Very shady you, love oh, wait, I mean, I don't want you, you to give away too much, but like, so it's going to, there's going to be a flavor of COVID on the show is what you're maybe saying? Well, okay. So without, I mean, none of this will make sense, but I'm, I, will, I won't try to give it away. There was an idea in, and this is our fourth and final two. We're also like wrapping it up. And there's like a yeah. couple things about the season that I would like to keep a secret and hopefully we shoot it one day and people will see it. But um, we had this idea about, what's happening in the future of the characters. And um, oddly enough, the joke plays, the joke plays. And so we were, already, we were already kind of commenting on, you know what, we were already kind of, this, this is a perfect diplomatic way to say it without giving anything away. We were already kind of commenting on um, how society has this tendency to monetize everything. You know, mm -hmm. every possible tragedy, be it pandemic, racism, whatever, slavery, you know, some company will find a way to sell, you know, more potato chips around the idea. <laughs> and uh, we were already kind of on that 
wavelength and you know being in the covid you really just see it everywhere i mean you know companies putting up all kinds of you know billboards or like commercials about we're here for you and we care about you know everyone is sort of at the end of the day just trying to make a buck still and that's so odd (laughs) and and that disconnect uh the show was kind of already about so that part's helpful timeline wise i don't know what we're gonna do i'm excited to watch it now (laughs) i mean me too i'd like to make it (laughs) yes yeah, you, so do you guys, would oh, you guys ahead. have any idea, like, do you, do you even have, like, a potential start date? I mean, we have always had a potential start date that, you know, we just have to, like, you have to live in that place of being absolutely freaked out that, like, we may shoot in two months, but also, like, keep it a little tempered and, like, there's a raging pandemic, so I'm not sure that's going to happen. You have to kind of stay in that beautiful purgatory. Oh, I know it well. Will yeah. we or won't we start massive production 14-hour, 16-hour days? I don't know. <laughs> it's a very sort of dark will they or won't they. It's weird. It's not weird. Beautiful, will they or won't they. It's a, uh, yeah. I find in television, I'm always, I'm often in that place, like whether you're waiting to hear if something's going to go or if it's going to come back, like there's always this like, God, in two months, I will be absolutely unemployed or I will be like busier than I've ever been in my entire life. Exactly. It's true. Do you you manage this? What's your strategy, Liz? Because I... I don't know if I if I have the best one, but I'm I'm working on it. The strategy for just the unknown of it all. Yeah, you know I mean? just dealing with this this interesting industry that we decided masochistically to be in. It, yeah, that's a. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I I <laughs> I'm I'm always um, I I like to have something to look forward to. It's yeah. just like that's sort of how I keep myself going, and you know, so you know, I'm obviously like very kind of entrenched and immersed in how to finish this season. You know, we do have so much writing to do. So I am just like sort of trying to visualize like, okay, like we are gonna get this done and like, and I'm and I'm gonna feel good about it. And I'm gonna, like, I do a lot of visualizing. That's sort of oh, definitely wow. one of my coping mechanisms is I try to just like go all the way forward, like as forward as I can, like almost even to like, we've already done, we've already shot the whole thing. And like, oh my God, I can't believe that all worked out. Mm. You know, like, I really, I try to, like, really take myself through it. Like, are we talking a vision board here? Are we talking meditation? What are we doing? I mean, I guess it's a form of meditation, but it's not like I'm, like, sitting there, like... Right. I'm just, it's like, it's almost like more of a... It's, a, it's like a, I'm choosing to have a resting thought of it. Mm, I love you know? that. Um, and my, it's something that my mother taught me to do when I was a kid, of just, like, when you feel sort of out of control of something or you're not quite sure how you're going to do something just visualize how you feel when it's done or how you want to feel when it's done you know because like you do have control over at least how you want to feel does that make sense i'm like legitimately i'm taking notes on this so (laughs) well it's it's when you feel like you don't have control over a situation or you're just not sure how you're going to finish something like, you know, like right now, I, I always go through a thing where I'm like, oh my God, like, am I doing this right? Am I telling the right story? And, and I'm like, when I start to get sort of worried, basically, uh, it, it's something, I'm not sure because we cut out, but I'm going to say it again. That's something that my mom taught me to do when I was young, which is visualizing how you want to feel when mm. the thing is done um, and not how you get there not like all the little steps that you had to take, but just the feeling that, that you have. And, you know, I think certainly I know, like you, you know the feeling of feeling really good about something. You, you, can, you can sort of tap into that feeling inside of you. You've had that feeling before. So you almost kind of like tap into the familiar feeling you've had and, go, and kind of like go like, okay, I'm going to feel like that. I'm going mm. to kind of try to sit in it. And that is like, that is what I try to do, like when I'm just kind of at a loss, you know, for right. what I exactly do in the moment. And right. then I, do, I do find that it, it's, it helps, you know, I do find that it like, at the very least, it, it sort of shakes me out of the worry of it. And it shakes me out of like, you know, the endless loop of like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? How's this going to work? Um, right. So that is, that's one way I deal with being in this crazy business is I just try to kind of force myself to think positively and 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 to think towards how I want to feel. Right. Wow, that's really good. That's really good. I I, I have medication um, <laughs> that I take. 
I mean, look, it always work. I understand. <laughs> um, it doesn't always do the trick list, but I'm hanging in there. I get, I get it. But also, like, don't you, I mean, do you do this? Like, you know, you're, you know, you'll, you know, you've obviously probably finished writing or you're in the process of finishing writing the season. Like, does your brain, like, just start thinking about, like, what you're going to do next? Like, what's next for Justin? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. She does not turn off this brain of mine. Um, I, I, I have given her a feminine, um, I don't know why I refer to her as that, but she, it feels that in my head. She's very in charge. She has a lot of ideas. Uh, never yeah. quite sure if the last idea was a good one. But yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm constantly sort of like, well, you know, like kind of updating it in my head. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know what we have, but oh, I just watched this amazing film or I just like read this amazing book or I saw this amazing documentary and I want to incorporate that, you know? And so I'm kind of always adding to it in my head. Um, yeah. You know, I do a little bit of that visualization, although I need to add the like feeling good part because I don't do that. <laughs> it really helps. It really yeah. helps. And oh, the other thing my mom would tell you is how, she, she always asks me, how are you going to celebrate? Mm. How are you gonna, what are you going to do? How are you going to celebrate when that thing finishes and it finishes in a way that you feel good about. Right. You know, I mean, like, and, and that's, it's, I, and, and, and because she sort of raised me like that, I do always try to celebrate when something good does happen. And like, you sort of like honor that good thing by giving it a moment and allowing yourself to feel good about it. Sure, yeah, I never do it, I should. I tell people this yeah, all of the time. To. I know, I tell people to do this all the time and I never, it's just, you know, I, I never do it. Uh, okay, this is a random question, but I just want to know, again, if other people do it like I do it. Do you watch other TV shows while you're writing your TV show? And if so, what kind of TV shows do you watch? Do you watch things that are like your show? Really good question. Um, you know, I think... That's a really good question. So it's a, I, Well, right now, I am not watching shows that are like my show because, yeah. you know... Things are limited in terms of what's even on TV right now. Very true. Um, but, you know, I mean, look, I will say, it, you know, while we were writing the first season, because um, I'm just trying to remember, like, the timing of it all. Like, I had already written the pilot. Um, and then I think when we were, we were watching the first season, I, I, I think I was watching Ozark. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it was mm -hmm. season one of Ozark. And I was like, oh, oh okay. God, this is interesting. Like, oh, it's like there, you know, it's like a little bit dark and there's like, you know, and I was like, oh, this is sort of like what I'm going for, but like mine is right. more of a comedy, you know, mine has right. especially more sort of female lens, you know? Right, right, right. And, um, and then I think like in the off, in like sort of my off seasons, I watched all of um, Fleabag. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't say that like necessarily, like I, I thought it was wonderful and I was inspired and jealous and all of the feelings. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, one thing that it did sort of give me was the permission to have my show be three seasons. Because mm -hmm. I thought it was so like, it was wonderful self-control on her part. Right. You know, on Phoebe Waller-Bridge's part to, to just have it be two seasons. like. It's it's such a wild thing to do when you have that popular and that good of a show. You right. Know, I think it won the Emmy, right, in the second in the second season, and then just to be like, I'm good. That's good. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to stop that. And I, I I just found that to be remarkable. And you know, I've worked on long running shows before, um, and as a as a television fan, as a viewer, I do find myself dropping off at a certain point. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I do. Even a show I love, I just yeah. you know, I just sort of tend to lose interest. And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's because I'm a writer and, you know, because it, maybe sometimes you can see things coming. And so it, it did give me permission to say, you know what, I really, I've always felt that my show was, was, was meant to be a, a shorter running show. And so sure. in the middle of our second, of shooting our second season, I sort of let everyone know, like, I really, I think the third season's the last season. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll stay in the room until I'm asked to leave, but I, <laughs> I do, I feel you on that. I, I can't watch anything in my lane at all when I'm making it. I just feel like I'm at work, you know, like, yeah. you know, like my friend Issa, you know, Insecure was coming out like 
towards the end of our writing process. And I was like, girl, I cannot wait to watch Insecure, but I am not going to watch it for the next four to five weeks because like, I can't watch it without it feeling like homework. You know, it's like, yeah. okay. I, I just like, I'm comparing and I'm, I'm, um, I'm in the writer's room, you know? I'm like, I'm hearing the jokes. I'm hearing the, I, I, I just, I can't do it. I have to be completely done, uh, which thankfully, um, you know, we were done and there was plenty more of that show to watch. Uh, which was very enjoyable. But when I'm writing, I got to watch like some BS. Like I got to watch stuff that is really remote, like What's Ancient Aliens. I love me some Ancient Aliens. <laughs> I love me some Housewives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love, there's this thing that happens like where my boyfriend will go to sleep and I'll still be up for like another hour or so. <laughs> And I love just watching like bonkers ass documentaries that have nothing to do with anything. When I say bonkers ass, I'm talking like, I just finished a documentary on World War II. Why? I don't know, Liz. I, we are, <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> that is, you are, I'm like, it is like looking in a mirror all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> my wife will go to sleep and then I want, I, especially at the beginning of COVID, I was uh -huh. the darkest shit. Yeah, me too. Oh my God. I was I'm watching. Like, I was watching like every serial killer thing that Netflix had to offer. Same. Oh my God. Serial killers, sex cult leaders, couldn't, couldn't get enough. Couldn't get enough. Confessions of a killer, I'm listening. Yes. I mean, it was, it, I was like in a really like super, super dark, like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. like I was like, and, and my wife was like, have fun. Sorry, <laughs> That's my man. <laughs> What's up, man? Hello. Say uh, hello to Austin. Oh, hi, Austin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, no problem. And um, it's like you have a life or something. It's like you really live there. It's so weird. I know. Um, it's like so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel so much better that you were watching really dark shit because oh, I yeah. feel a little bit like, is what am I do Like, is this, am I? But I think it's because... I, I realized, I was like, oh, I'm watching stuff that is darker than what's going on now. Yes, oh my God, I think that's it exactly. Because when you, oh my, when you think things are rough, like watch anything about the 60s <laughs> or like, <laughs> or, the you know I mean? or the Holocaust or the Great Depression, like just put on the 80s. Like I just watched, the, there's a, a thing on, on Netflix right now about crime, like the crime lords of New York City. And is it's like- I'm reading it. Oh yeah, I, oh God, oh, someone from Netflix say the name of it. I don't remember, oh, but it just, it just came out and you'll, you'll, you'll feel like it's new. It, it, it's really cool and, and new and, um, but yeah, it's like, it, it just helps contextualize the moment. It's like, things are pretty bad, but I will say on the whole directionally, you know, we're making some worse. progress, like some. Yeah, yeah, Where's it that? could be worse. We, 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 there could be a serial killer loose. There could, and there probably is, yeah, there but is. you know what? Yeah. They're not killing us now, so no, no. everything's fine. They have not figured out where I live yet. And not, not yet, yeah. not yet. Wait, Possibly oh, working on it through Zoom as we, as we do oh, this cool. talk. But you know, it's fine. Um, my recent obsession is a show called Alone. Oh, I don't know her. Girl. Oh. Honey. Okay. I mean, I feel like now that I feel like we're in a very similar, you know, zone yes. in terms of what we what what is escapist television. I'm but, literally typing it down. <laughs> <laughs> there's, like, there's one season on Netflix, and it's, okay. it's the sixth season. I know that seems crazy, but you could start there. You could start. I there. will. It's called Alone. Yes, it is a it is a documentary sort of competition series where they literally drop off individual people alone in the middle of nowhere and they have to survive they they have no food they have no shelter they have they're allowed to bring like 10 items and they have to just like survive Ooh, it's giving me like survivor vibes which i also have been watching a lot of in court if you like survivor then you will like i do i do like survivor and big brother and anything that's trash i love it <laughs> just like put it in my veins did those you, aren't trash. Those are actually like very well-made shows. But no, they yeah. are. They are. Did you? Did you watch, um, oh shit! What's it called? The um, did you watch the stupid dating show on Netflix? Oh oh oh! The Circle or the there was a marriage one, right? The one. Well, there was the marriage one. God, what with the? Why the, can't I remember these the names? Um, it was. Oh god! Do, 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 
I know the one you're talking oh, about because the, like too hot to handle. Oh, I didn't see too hot to handle. Love, Love is blind. blind. That's the one I watch and yes. continue to follow several of the couples from that show. As do I. As do oh I. Oh my god, I'm obsessed with several of those couples. Me too. I I am. It is as if they are my my parents, <laughs> I, like, and that their 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 relationships very survival is. Yeah. Um, linked to my own it's like it's very i thought it was so dumb at first but then i was like this show is genius no same i got so connected to these people working their problems out i cannot tell you but i think i mean i don't know i i gave up feeling a shit because i when i first started in tv it felt like everybody was like always watching like the most prestigious television and i was like i can't do that while i'm working i need i need to like go somewhere else when i'm watching tv and so when i'm not working i i love going to these places like right now i'm living for i may destroy you i think it is just me too, me too. So, so good it's, it's brilliant and it's liberating and i'm like you can do that on tv now no one told me i did not get that memo well she's like i'm doing it on she's TV. like i'm just doing it what you think yeah but if i was writing right now i couldn't watch it because it's too it's too good frankly like it's i need really to not good. a little bit soul crushing because it's so good and i'm like yeah well, i was like well why do i need to do anything I know, we, we don't actually, we can just let her do all the things okay. because, you know, but yeah, I, I, I sort of like, uh, I can't, appre I can't be entrenched in like beautiful storytelling when mm -hmm. I'm trying to make beautiful storytelling. I just can't do it. I don't know why. I understand. I really do. And I think I'm also a relatively insufferable person to watch TV with. Um, though my, <laughs> wife, my wife is very patient, but like most of the time, certainly not with I May Destroy You, but a lot of times I'll be watching shows and I'm like, I don't know why they did that. Nobody would do that. Oh, really? I know. I'm, I'm really? like, like I, she's going to go in there. Even Liz, though she we have to stop it. it I'm, I'm we like, have to I'm, stop it. I'm because I'm, asshole. that's why, I, especially when I'm working, I'm watching the show. First of all, me and my boyfriend both talk over the shows and it annoys both of us incessantly, but we're both the same way. So <laughs> who's going to stop first? I don't know. But when we're watching a show, he's pointing out the continuity errors. Like that's his thing. <laughs> like he's always like aware when like that was actually a napkin. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's fine. Uh, he's very aware of that. And I'm very aware of like, oh, that needs a punch up. Or like, you know, oh, they did that in, in the season of da 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 You know, like I'm I'm very like, if if this script came across my desk, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yeah. I'm compiling my notes like aloud, which he can't stand. <laughs> Cause it totally <laughs> ruins the viewing experience. I, I sometimes I try to guess how many drafts were done of the script. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. like I'm like, I'm like mm, that's a that somebody so that's a first draft. That's a first. It feels like a first draft. I know. <laughs> like I get it. Like you're like a big time person, but like you should have let somebody edit you. Like um, a quick polish. A little bit of a polish. Give me a mm -hmm. punch up. Something. <laughs> um, well, good. We should watch TV together sometime. I know. And, and, I know. And just annoy the shit out of each other. I love it. I well, actually, I have a group of, of filmmakers I do watch movies with for this reason because. When we, we're just like pontificating the whole fucking time. I'm sure like no one can stand us either, but it's nice because we all know what we're doing. <laughs> you know, yeah. We're all doing that thing. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of MASH too, by the way. Wow. That I is, know. Uh, I'm as shocked as you are, Liz. That is, I did not see that coming. Me is, neither. Uh, that's quite a, quite a twist. Um, you know, that's, I mean, it's, it's obviously meant to be one of the greatest shows of all time. Um, it holds up, I gotta say. It really holds up. There's a lot of misogyny and racism and homophobia that does not hold up. I mean, who among clear. us? To be very clear, there's a character named Spear Chucker that just disappears after a while because they're like, oh, this is probably racist. And instead of addressing it, the character just is not on the show anymore. It's like the classic uh, white solve for these things. But right. nevertheless, I'm like, okay, this is instructive. Like, I'm actually like, I can watch this show and learn from it because I'm not working. <laughs> I'm I not like remember. writing every day. Cause that was like, it was in reruns when I was a kid and it was like too Same, dark yeah. for me. Like I just thought it was yeah. depressing, you know? And I didn't and get it. And the tone is weird. It is weird. And there's it's a laugh track tone. and there arguably shouldn't be. It's so disturbing that laugh track. But then at a certain point you just get used to it and it just feels right. Even though you know it's so wrong. I can't explain it. I don't, it's, it's like, you know what? It's a show that shouldn't hold up, but does. And so it's I keep watching. Enough. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a visit back. Or don't Liz. It's fine. We can keep <laughs> watching Hitler documentaries or whatever. 
Um, I was I was given like a time uh, signal, so yes, I, I, I did want to ask. Actually, already talked more than we were supposed to, so yes, okay. let's just hang up immediately. Or I have one question that I thought was was cute from our little okay. list of questions that we totally don't have at all because this is just a completely spontaneous conversation. Just but two, two friends chatting, yeah, go ahead. Just two friends chatting. Um, is there anything that you heard like early in your career, like maybe from another showrunner or something that you saw like mantra ask? I mean, you're, the thing that you got from your mom is brilliant, but anything that you heard early on that's like, you know, become like a lesson for you or become like um, something that you like to, to use going forward? You know, um, it's, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I mean, probably a lot of things, uh, but what comes to mind first is, um, you know, I worked. For, I worked for Ellen for for many years, and mm. um, what I learned from her is that it is it is easier to be mean and funny, and it is much harder to be nice and funny. Mm. And I really took that with me, uh, and I continue to try to practice that, uh, not just as a person in the world, but also right in the way that I draw characters and the way that I, you know, comment on humanity is that like, I, I'm not interested in mean humor. Like I'm not interested in tearing people down. And I, I do continue to try to, you know, sort of write from a place of empathy, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and uh, I never try to like, I never try to like take a whole, you know, community of people down or take a celebrity or whatever. Like I just, right. uh, I, I take that, I take that lesson with me. I'm right here, Liz. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, me neither. By the way, that does not mean that I don't laugh, you know, and that I don't enjoy, <laughs> you know, it's just for me, that's, that is, that is, you asked, man. I mean, what are you- It's true. Well, I certainly would never address a group of people all at once in my show either. But I will say a piece of advice that I got early on, um, which is different. I like that advice a lot, though. It is harder to be nice than it is to be mean uh, and funny. Um, I was told not to kill myself out of my show. <laughs> or I was. I sort of grew up, you know, learning how to write TV and film, never seeing myself in the thing mm -hmm. that I was studying. And so, you know, I, I, that first season, um, I'm very clearly the gay black nerd on the show, Lionel. I'm also a little bit of Sam. I'm everybody, but I'm really Lionel. And sure. there was a there was a plot line I had where something happens to Lionel, where he would no longer be a part of the cast. And and uh, you know, my then co showrunner Yvette Lee Bowser turned to me. She said, "Why would you kill yourself from the show? Why would you write yourself off?" And it just never occurred to me to write myself at all because I'm never on TV. Um, but that is such. I found like that's the advice I keep going back to. Is like, how do I even when it's not like such a clear oh, that's a gay black nerd. Like, how do I put my shit, for lack yeah. of a better word, in, in this thing? And yeah, how do, you, how do you sort of imbue your characters with yourself and your voice? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that's good advice. And and listen, I'm I'm a gay woman. Uh, I, I, I can't believe it took me almost an hour to say that. Um, <laughs> so I, I really understand, uh, you know, the, first of all, the desire to see yourself on TV and you know the and and the need to really yeah. you know to 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 really give yourself over to characters so that other people watching at home have that representation because you know yeah. it's a trope at this point but it matters it does it so matters it, it really, really matters. does it can change it can change someone's whole life seeing it, someone that reminds them of themselves on TV it really can it can i know that it has for me and so you Same. know to be able to you know, maybe do that for somebody else is a real gift. Um, yeah. And definitely like one of the true blessings of being a showrunner is being able to control that narrative and, and, and give people something that makes them feel good about themselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love your show and I, I really you, enjoyed talking to you and meeting you. I mean, I feel like we, when COVID is over, we should meet for real and, and, yeah. have, and have a drink and uh, talk about TV. I'll just walk down the hallway to your part of the house and we'll Perfect. be, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to meet you, Justin. Thanks, Liz. Have a good, have a good rest of your quarantine. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Enjoy. If that's yes. Possible.